Hello everybody and thank you so much for spending time with me again today on Inner Views, where we speak to the people behind the businesses and brands. And today I'm very, very excited to be chatting with Lynn Logie. Lynn, please will you tell us a little bit more about your business and why you started it? With pleasure. Melanie, thank you for taking time to chat with me and hear a little bit about my story. Favorite Things is a new brand which I launched in February this year, which offers thoughtful and locally handmade products. I left formal employment in 2017 and took a moment to reflect on where to next. What if I could create something most suited to my personality and which aligns with my foundational values and be brave enough to not worry about the outcome? I would trust that in doing that which makes sense to who I am, that I'd be supported along the way. And I really, really have been. And I'd love to share a couple of the organizations and people that I've met along the way who have been instrumental in my, let's say, success to date. Mm -hmm. um, the Dipsluit Foundation is in Dipsluit, in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. They, amongst other things, have a carpentry school and a sewing school. Mm. I took the idea to them and worked with them over the course of last year, just fine tuning a variety of sets of samples. And then I went into a prototype phase and through that was introduced to and befriended Henry Levine, who has an incredible environment called the Made in Workshop. Mm -hmm. It's in Randburg in Johannesburg. It is a wonderfully masculine rustic a building that has all manner of machinery and tools in it and if you have a creative vision and want to make something out of wood or metal or i'm sure the other materials that could be used you can rent time in this space so it's a maker uh, space okay. it's a maker space oh fantastic exactly. and i spent probably two months give or take in this space learning with my hands to use CNC routers and all sorts of crazy machines I've never even heard of before. I learned how to buy, fill, clean, and spray a spray gun. And the prototypes that I have that have been photographed by a, a brilliant photographer that are on my website were made with my own two hands. A, I'm incredibly proud of that fact, but I'm just even more grateful for the for learning that stuff. And that learning. I know for years to come, it will come out in, in the most incredible way. So that was really amazing. And then the third source of production support that I've received is from a longstanding friend of mine who has manufactured furniture for some of the well-known food franchises in South Africa for well over 20 years. And I had just, I had indicated to him that I had a concern around all the equipment that I would need being in one space. So that would just be practical logistically. And long story short, he gave me access to his factory. Uh, I, I don't have, as you can hear, I don't, I don't have enough thanks for, for his incredible generosity. And, and then there's Pelo, who's my teammate, and we sit um, in comfortable silence for hours on end in our big sink plot warehouse and glue and cut and drill and all sorts of things uh, together as we make these bags. So there are three of us who, who contribute to the making of the bags. So now I've said the word bags. That is the first of favorite things, thoughtful and locally handmade products that we have launched earlier this year. I'd love to show it to you. Well, please do. They um, sound lovely. So here it is, the ladies' clutch bag. Can you hold it up a little? Oh. Ah, there we go. So made of 22 very precise pieces of pine in this instance. And it's lined with a... A lovely, vibrant, oh, open it the other way, uh, a vibrant fabric, and it's got a very useful magnetic close on both ends. Oh, so that's beautiful. This is the ladies. I beg your pardon? That is beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I'm, you know, we've worked really, really hard on, on quality, um, and yeah, I, I can say we are very proud about what it looks like. Um, the first range is made in, in pine local pine and it's available in five colors and the second range which will be launched next month is actually made out of mdf or superwood 
uh, and that's going to be available in four colors. So, so that's really why it was born. Um, I think central to the business too, apart from offering thoughtful and locally handmade products is I want to enable upskilling and I want to provide employment opportunities for those who are not employed. Mm -hmm. um, God willing, I'll do that on a, on a large scale, but for now, Pelo is, is, um, is with me. And the other thing that's central to my business is some of my more subtle favorite things. I'm a student of philosophy and I follow a particular philosophy, but I want to engage with people around those more subtle favorite things. And so I'm hoping that by my website and some blogs and blogs that we can address some of those things that really just go a long way to making life a little bit less stressful. Mm. So that's, that's some of my story. Wow, that's amazing. I actually did some training um, for the Dipsluit Youth Project probably oh. about 15 years ago. Yeah. So um, I've, I've been into that area and seen some of the work that they're doing there. And uh, Just incredible. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm very happy to have mentioned them because they do incredible work. And obviously through the foundation, they are also training, upskilling people and, and affording them opportunity to, to self-employ themselves and, and do creative stuff. They love to do projects. They love to take on commissions. So uh, to anybody who's uh, watching and listening, uh, mm -hmm. if you want skilled people doing some of those, those great things, don't hesitate to connect with them. Mm -hmm. I know when I went in there, the, the Dipslurt Youth Project was run by one guy who was just training people whatever he could from his shack virtually. Uh. Um, and and it's still, it was fascinating to me because he had this amazing web presence so that when you got there and you, you found he, he had these rolls of fabric that had been donated by a bank, it shoved into the back of his shack and there was one lady on a sewing machine working frantically away making stuff and he was getting orders and, and if you saw the conditions that they were working in, so it's wonderful to hear that that kind of energy and movement has now been formalized into, into something meaningful that is, that is working for the community. Yeah. People are, are just incredibly resourceful, mm. Mm. Um, but they do need, it's getting to market. That seems to be one of the challenges. Absolutely. So I just think the more people who can provide guidance and support and know how on that, Wow, it will make an incredibly tremendous difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, it sounds to me as though there was a, a period of time between you leaving your formal employment and officially starting the new business. Did you spend all of that time in research and development? No. <laughs> no, I didn't. I really did take some time out. Um, okay. And when I say time out, not that I was, it wasn't burnout or anything like that. It was very deliberate. Uh, it was a deliberate and I believe a healthy choice just mm. to, man, I, I sit on this couch a lot, just mm. thinking about things. I think when you are quiet and you allow yourself that gap, silence, silence, you know, brings, brings to the surface things that are important. If you just allow yourself to listen. Mm. So I, I really did a lot of nothing. Um, mm. Makes me think of a movie now and a, and a beautiful Italian expression, the sweetness of doing nothing. It's an Italian thing. I can't remember the exact words now. But yeah, I did. I, I experienced the sweetness of doing nothing a lot. And, and then um, I, I started walking a lot. And in fact, so for over three years, I've been doing some really serious walking. Um, I joined Toastmasters. I'd been quite a, I am an introvert by nature. Usually I'm giving someone the microphone, certainly not taking it, but an aspiring author. And I thought to myself, well, maybe the message that I want to share, which is philosophically based, maybe it should be a speech first before it's a book. Mm. And so I joined Toastmasters and, um, and got onto the executive committee of my club and did those kinds of other stuff. Mm. Just mm. not your traditional career things. It sounds um, like you've and, spent some intensive time doing self-care. Ah, yes. Yeah. So, so that brings to mind. In fact, I met a lovely 
uh, Lady Lee Joy, who many people probably know, um, last week, and we spoke about the importance of self-care and that some people, you know, are hesitant to afford themselves that opportunity because they think it's mm-hmm. selfish. Well, I, I have an incredibly opposite viewpoint of that. I think it's incredibly unselfish. In fact, I think it's selfless. Mm-hmm. And there's a beautiful expression that ties in with that. And that is that I will take care of me for you mm-hmm. if you will take care of you for me. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Mm. So self-care is, is critical, not only to ourselves, but in, it enables us to add enormously greater value to all living things um, mm. if we do it regularly, that's, actually. That's a beautiful reflection. Now, um, you've started with bags. Uh, what next? Oh, so, yeah, I, I, I joked as I was preparing some thoughts to chat to you. Was, wouldn't it be nice if I could tell you what the next thing is? But I can't because okay. the list is, is still fairly extensive and I just haven't drawn down enough. I will tell you, I have a, I have a favorite at the top, um, which, which involves actually a, a necklace. Um, it's also incredibly unique and, and beautiful and will allow, um, you know, upskilling and employment. So, so perhaps that, mm. but I don't know. We'll see. Okay. It's wonderful to speak to an entrepreneur who's not in a hellfire hurry to just get it all done today. That is, uh, yeah, that's a a wonderful statement. And I I love it because that's one of the key learnings coming out of my last three years is being brave enough to let the flow flow. Mm. And when you come out of a busy corporate environment, you think that the timeline should be X. And actually, when you try, and I I love using the word manipulate, Mm. it's not not useful in any shape or form to try and manipulate anything to to the way you think it should be done. Mm. Um, You will not end up with a result that is in your favor. And so... It's, it, is, it is hard. It, it does take courage to some extent to just let one day unfold after the other. Mm. Follow your instinct. If you, we know what's right and wrong. Every, mm. every single one of us does. And, and some of us just listen more closely than others. Mm. And I've just tried to do that. And it has been an incredibly long period. I mean, it, people were, people, my friends were worried for me, I think. They thought, goodness, you, surely you should be getting back into something. My parents have been worried. Um, and I just stuck to my guns. I'm not saying my timeline was optimal. I think it was longer than it should have been, truth be told, but mm. it's what I did. Um, and I'm gonna, I, but I'm, I'm, I'm better for it. Um, yeah. So mm. time is, time is a wonderful thing if you allow it. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, I've also, um, there are so many, uh, examples of businesses out there that the timing was just not right because the person mm. who launched the business had a great idea that was way ahead of the market. Um, so perhaps your waiting has been waiting for the right time. I hope so. Um, it feels like it. It's, mm. um, it's, uh, it's not, it, it is a slow process mm. and but I feel incredibly supported by everybody around me. Mm. Um, so I just want, you know, one deliberate step in front of the other. That's what I'm doing. And um, I believe, you know, I'm, I'm focused on quality and the philosophy and the foundation of my business, I think is solid. So mm. Mm. what else can I do other than that? Mm. Now you say you started in February and then lockdown hit us in March, April. How did that feel? Um, do you know again because I think that the nature of who I am I actually was fine I really was fine I just you know it's a, it's again it's just life being life it throws you know throws highs and lows and uh, nothing I could do about it so so I thought well what am I going to do in this time so I, <laughs> I like to grow veggies and herbs and ordinarily i'm too lazy to plant from seed and so i thought well you've got time ahead of you by the looks of things so i planted some seeds and i've grown some lockdown veggies and again just use the time for some other things uh, and but also for just thinking about the business do i feel like i'm on the right track what's happened to date how does it feel uh what have i what do i take away from it mm-hmm. um what should i look to doing differently so again just 
just pro analysis and process. And, and I think that's, I'd love to share this, which is a, a single pointed focus for anything that I do is, and I, I try to think a couple of weeks ago, I needed to talk about it to somebody. I thought how best to explain it because there's so many ways I could explain it. So I came up with the three C's and they are curiosity, choice and consistency in any, any single thing that I do. If something, for example, stops making sense to me, well then engage the curiosity and say, mm, something feels a little bit off color here. Why? Mm. Is there an alternative? Are there alternatives? Which one does come with some sound reason and logic? Okay, now you, you make another choice, a new mm. choice for yourself. Mm with confidence and you practice that with consistency. Mm. That's everything that I do is around. I approach it like that. Not all, not all day, not every day. I'm human, but, but, but that matters to me. That's my single point of focus is kind of mastering that because when you do the highs and lows don't, don't really impact you so much anymore. You kind of, you, you get to go, you know, a little bit like that as opposed to that. Absolutely. That's such great wisdom to share. Thank you so much. So um, you mentioned earlier that uh, getting product to market is one of the challenges that uh, a lot of uh, manufacturers have. So how are you overcoming that challenge with your business? Well, I, I, I haven't yet. Um, so my learning to date, I created a website. I did an incredible e-commerce course. So, uh, worked with somebody else, created a website, which looks lovely. Websites are useful tools, I think, for any product, but they are more useful for certain products. I don't think my particular product, the clutch bag, falls into that category mm -hmm. because it is such a tactile thing. People love to pick it up and touch mm -hmm. it. In fact, some ladies even smell it. Mm -hmm. It's just mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And so it needs to be in front of people. Mm -hmm. So I started my business with the website thinking, oh, goodness, people are going to be so excited. They're going to go online, they're going to see the bag, and they're going to order in a, you know, in a flurry. No. So that's been quite tough in a way because maybe a little bit of ego there. Why are people buying my beautiful bag that I worked so hard on? Mm. But it's not about that. It's, it's about positioning your brand, your very specific brand, uh, absolutely appropriately. And so what I do know is that I need to put this – into, into the face of people in person. And so I've made application to some of the better design shows that are held um, in South Africa. And thankfully I've been receiving um, quite nice feedback and I've been accepted to a couple of them. And in fact, I'd love to mention one, which is gonna be the first, another first for favorite things. We're going to be exhibiting the bags at Mosaic Expo, which is an expo held annually mm. um, on the West Rand, Randburg. Mm. It's been going for a long year. time. Yeah. Yes. We're probably um, more than a so decade I'm, already. Oh, you see, I, I obviously live in a cave because I have <laughs> not heard of it. <laughs> and one of my very good girlfriends said to me, "You, firstly, I don't, I cannot believe you don't know about it, but also you have to be there." So I made application, and I'm thrilled. They, they said yes. So, so I'm preparing stock for that, mm -hmm. which is also incredibly difficult. All these firsts. How do you, how do you know how to, you know? Uh, gather together what how much stock do i need so i'm learning i'm just learning i'm learning and um but yeah i'm looking forward to being at some of the better shows and and i suppose then through word of mouth and awareness the website may become a more useful tool for me but for now it's not fantastic but that's okay um yeah. and you mentioned an e-commerce site oh so yeah my website is an online store okay it's an e-commerce okay. it's an e-commerce store and uh that was really fun, actually, learning how to build an, an e-commerce store. Um, I, I, easy for me. I only have a product for now. Mm. Um, there are people that have got, you know, thousands and thousands of products. And again, the support of the company that I did my e-commerce course through, they have um, Facebook groups. People all day long are saying, you know, they're starting at different parts of the process and asking questions. And those that have gone before and learned or sharing and helping and guiding and just incredible. So I don't, I don't feel alone. Although we, you know, largely working from home through through COVID, mm -hmm. um, there's mm -hmm. thousands of people that I can connect with, and people just, for the most part, seem sincere in wanting to help each other up and through and forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I know it can be very difficult uh, sometimes. You, you know, there was that movie many years ago. Uh, if you build it, they will come. Do you remember that one, yeah. Field of Dreams? And um, I think a lot of us entrepreneurs have that feeling that if we build it, they'll come. And then we build these magical, wonderful things that we dream yeah. up, and then nobody comes. And yeah. um, it can be quite disappointing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think the well, I think it's true of just about anything in life. There's a small percentage of people who are successful at anything. Mm. I think mm. I, I, I suppose that stands to reason. Not we couldn't all be successful at all things. Mm. There's just just market for all of that. So mm. so so somehow the load is shared, and um, hopefully in a fair way. I'd love to see more of that. But um, yeah. Well, for me in the business space, my heroes are not the people who make it big because the people who make it big, it's easy for them. My heroes are the, are the little businesses that persevere, even though it is so excruciatingly difficult. And they continue on through the tough times and the lean money times, and they just persevere to continue doing what they do. Because I think that takes great courage. Um, so... Uh, for me, the Flippers. heroes are not the are not the people who are doing really well. It's it's the ones who struggle on. I agree with you completely. Mm. Now, now your vision to employ people and empower people. Uh, how do you plan to kind of flesh that out in your business moving forward? I suppose I mean I could probably elaborate on that, but the simple answer is that if I offer quality products at a reasonable price mm. and I don't even want to say beautiful products because I don't that's not the focus for me um they just it happens to be a beautiful item and, and they all probably will be but quality at a reasonable price I will scale mm. and, and and you know keep adding another product and as I eat as I add another product I can employ more people mm. so it's just a numbers game it's a volume game mm. um, and I will always retain an interest in adding another product because that's a really fun creative process for me. Mm. Um, mm. So as I do continue to do what I like well, mm. those kind of goals that I have for my business will organically happen. Just mm. to, they marry well together, those two things. Mm. What have been the biggest challenges that you've encountered so far? Um, mm -hmm. capital I think anybody would, would, would include that in their answer unless they had access to a lot of it and, and that's great um, but there's also a wonderful challenge in building a business with very little because it, it is actually in fact doable if you tap into if you, if you ask I suppose if you are happy to be a little bit vulnerable mm -hmm. um, uh, and there's a difference between vulnerable and, and begging people for things for free. That's not what I'm talking about. Um, just, I, I guess also just always listening to, to your, the little voice inside that provides such wonderful guidance um, on, oh, okay, I'm at a crossroads, where to next? Just really stopping and pausing and not getting overwhelmed by the the emotion in those moments and letting your intellect and your reason and logic again to to guide you. So there's so many of those little obstacles. In in fact, it brings to mind production. I mean, this I have not had children of my own, but I like to somewhat facetiously, but in some in some respects, quite seriously, say I have birthed this bag. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so intense was learning about the production of it. Um, mm -hmm. Wow. And that's just production process. It wasn't that it was a dramatic process. It was just a first time for me. And so it felt quite tough mm. that you would go two days and then just the bag just wouldn't fit. And then I learned, I, I, I learned to just relax in those moments more and say, okay, this is just normal part of production. Mm. You come across an obstacle, think about it. You need to find a solution. Okay. Solution found, move on. And, and, and that just happened a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Mm. And now, and, and so I was somewhat intimidated by this bag for a very long time. And I was really thrilled to say to my friend the one day, do you know what? 
I'm I'm the master now. I'm in charge. Of this thing. <laughs> it's no longer in charge of me, and that was a really cool thing. Yeah, so production is wild. I tell you what, uh, you know, someone also said to me, "Oh gosh, what if someone what if someone copies your product?" I said, "I uh, try. I dare you to try." <laughs> it's a lot of hard work, but it's well worth it with all the learning. I'm, mm. uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty complex product to put together. Mm. So what do you enjoy most about being self-employed? Oh, goodness. There's so much. There's so much. Well, that I can chat to you sitting on my, my couch. Although I suppose that's not really unique anymore because so many people are working from home. But um, pre-COVID, yes. Working from, you know, I'm, I'm a homely kind of girl. So, so being at home is wonderful. Being casual is wonderful for me. Um, not having to travel in traffic is incredibly valuable. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not a stand around the water cooler chatting kind of person. In fact, I've worked in the 30 years I've been working, half of that I've worked from home. So it's, and thank goodness I've been able to do that. Uh, and I'm also, you know, we're all different personalities. I have also in the last three years come to really understand and accept who I am. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean I don't want to make any changes because I do all the time, but I'm not a boardroom kind of person. Mm. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not, I don't know if it's that I'm not tough enough and I, that's not dissing me when I say that. Um, I'm just not made up of the right pieces for a mm. boardroom. Mm. I don't like, I don't like, I think there's a lot of these, there tends to be quite a, fair, quite a lot of ego in those environments. And, and, mm. and I, I, I've come to understand that that's not useful. Although I don't, I'm not saying I don't, um, display that from time to time i'm still learning but yeah it, it just seems more sincere and more authentic the self-employment journey i and i'm in greater control of, uh, of more parts of it and so i just have a, i have a better quality of life because mm. of it mm -hmm. i do believe that the point of being self-employed is to create a life that we want yes 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 and yes do you feel that maybe there are more people in corporate out there who aren't really a great fit for it than we realize? Oh, because I interview a lot of people who've left the corporate space to become self-employed. <laughs> Answer is definitely a resounding yes. Okay. We could talk about that. We could talk about that for ages. In fact, <laughs> it's bringing about new thoughts that I've never even thought before. Mm. And, and one of them is that, you know, and I said this to someone in this last week, this, the, the word career and this expression earn a living. I don't, I don't particularly love either of them. Mm. Um, I don't need to earn a living. I am alive by virtue that I breathe. Yes. Um, I don't need to. It, it sounds like you, you have to do something in order, in order to, to earn this living. Um, mm. that you, it's not a natural right. And I, so I don't, I don't really love it. Um, I, I, it's a tough one, but yes, your answer is definitely yes. There are plenty of people who don't suit the corporate environment, and um, and I understand why they are still there because it does take a fair amount of planning and and overcoming fears and being brave and bold and courageous and, and a bunch of other things. And you know, and it's certainly it is easier for some people than others. I'm I'm a single person without children so just mm. by virtue of that fact i it's it's easier for me mm. um versus someone you know a single mom of three children how, how could she it's not impossible I, I would never say that because i think these things are possible but but it, it would take an enormous amount of planning for that person so so I'm, mm. I'm respectful of that but i do encourage people to just give to spend more time again on the self-care considering those things for themselves particularly if their personality is is not um ha happy in in that corporate environment mm -hmm. thank you for that reflection it's very meaningful so you mentioned earlier that you're thinking about a book what's the book <laughs> going to be about um well that's i, I know the answer that, and it's essentially around the three c's that i spoke about the single pointed focus which is you know, guided by the philosophy that I follow, okay, which I've alluded to a few times, and that's just about is it's about developing your human human intellect, which is 
the faculty which enables you to apply reason and logic to things that mm. governs your emotional mind we know we're emotional and we're human and that's fine we're not trying to get rid of those but just let this this guy manage this guy when you have to make important choices for your life yes that's all it is it's very simple but it is so simple that you know people will say oh yeah, no no that yes but but you need to not only know it you need to really understand it and decide you're going to assimilate that and immerse yourself in it and practice it and do, it, do so consistently that's when you actually see the effect of it yes so we know all know about cause and effect um it's it can't be avoided by any thing at all. It's a yes. universal law. Yes. So, so do whatever you, I love to say it very casually, do whatever you dig, but understand there's, there's consequences. So just be really, very aware that uh, that's, that's the truth. I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. Do what you dig. So Lynn, I noticed we're coming near the end of our time. Um, what advice would you give to, somebody out there who's watching, who's thinking of starting their own thing? Gosh, you're catching me on this last question. <laughs> no, I mean, I think I'm going to go back to, I have to go back to my philosophy, that my foundational values, which, which are that um, we must be curious about things and we should not take anything for granted and we must question anything that doesn't make sense to us. We cannot take it on face value or because somebody else has said it is so. Mm -hmm. So if you have a passion for something and you have a personality that you think suits that passion, I think you should definitely spend time thinking about how you can make it happen for yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think you must always, or not almost always engage reason and logic and practicality when making those choices and, and managing your likes and dislikes because those can't always matter. Mm. Hope that makes some sense. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. That makes a lot of sense. So if anybody would like to find your beautiful bags online, how can they get hold of you? Favorite things. So the website is called favoritethings.co.za favorite is without the you i'm keeping it simple uh, on facebook it is favorite things .africa. on instagram it is also favorite things .africa. my email address is lynn at favorite things .africa. um would you like me to give my mobile number i'm happy to give that so I'll just... yes if if you want to give it out absolutely sure zero eight two eight five zero five seven four five you're welcome to connect with me love to hear from you about my business about anything else for that matter love thank to, you so, to meet thank you so much for your time to put this together it was such a wonderful conversation thank you i enjoyed it thoroughly too thanks so much <laughs>